Hello, in this Vita 3K video, I am going to cover how to set up an Xbox controller so you can, well, use an Xbox controller to play Vita games emulated on your Windows machine. So, there are a few things I want to go through first because depending on what type of Xbox controller you use, you, you know, you might have to buy some extra stuff, do some extra steps, that sort of stuff. So, but I'm going to cover you, you know, I'm going to fully cover you. First of all, I'll start with Let's go to the bottom, so Xbox 360. So if you have an Xbox 360 controller, and let's say if you have the wired one, the hardwired one, that is, where the wire cannot be you know, taken out unless you break it off, obviously, that's plug and play, because that obviously supports no wireless. Plug and play, you're all good to go, fine. Okay, so that's like one of the easiest ones. If you have a the you know wireless one, if I put controller, that's what will come up, one of these ones, it's it's a bit different. Okay, so with this, you can't plug it in via a wire because what you can get is something called a play and charge kit. And this is this thing that plugs in the top. And I remember when I first, you know, got this, I got it for the play and charge functionality, but then I was thinking, I can use this like about 15 years ago. I, and I was, um, I was at high school at the time. I, I was pretty young then. And probably about 15. And I remember thinking, I can, you know, double this up as a game controller. Because I didn't have a game controller that I could use with the PC as well. And back then, things were a lot, you know, harder to sync stuff up uh, controller-wise as well. And I don't think my, because it was a custom build machine. Because obviously, I wasn't really earning my own money at the time. So... Like, it wasn't as simple as, okay, let's go and buy, like, now if I want to get something, let's go and buy the controller. Okay, I'm rambling. I remember thinking, plugging in, doesn't work. It's for charging only, so you can't use that. It is the way it is. So if you want to use your wireless controller, you're not out of luck. You can, but you have to buy one of these dongles. And I remember back in the day, they were pretty costly. You might be able to get one at a decent price now on eBay or maybe Amazon, maybe even a third-party one. I've only ever tested the official ones. Like I had this exact one, this one here. And with this, you plug it in, you just press the button on here, you press the sync button on your 360 controller, syncs up, you're good to go, that's fine. You can think of this like a Bluetooth receiver. Okay, that's all good. Now let's get onto Xbox One. <laughs> so this is where it gets even patchier. So if you have an Xbox One and you connect it via a micro USB cable, because that's how you use to charge it and connect it via a wire. Any micro USB cable, that's fine. It works as if it's just a wired controller. No, nothing extra for you to specifically install. That's good. Now, this is where it gets a bit, you know, patchy. Because if you are connecting it wirelessly, some Xbox One controllers work wirelessly to Bluetooth. Some don't and you need the dongle. All will work to the dongle. So if you have a dongle, you can just connect it to that. That is fine. The if you have ones that are Project Scorpio or Xbox One X and newer, they did have the new Bluetooth standard, the one with that had a bit of a grip at the back, and you know, fixed these, you know, LB and RB buttons not pressing in properly, and you know, you know, added a bunch of other small changes as well. They work fine for Bluetooth, but if you just check, like Xbox One controller Bluetooth check. And and I'll provide a link to this. And this basically just checks if uh, is this the website? I did provide a website in a previous Xbox controller sync video. This was the one. Yeah. So this will help you identify if it's a controller that has Bluetooth built in or proprietary wireless technology. If it's proprietary wireless, you need the dongle. So if we type in Xbox One dongle. And this is what it looks like. It's a lot sleeker looking than the 360 one. And yeah, so this is the dongle. There's just a button to press on there at the side. This light starts flashing. You just press the sync button on your Xbox One controller. It can be any Xbox One controller that is, and you'll sync to it. That's fine. So that's Xbox One. If you talk about the new Xbox Series controllers, and these, you, know, you can tell the difference like this, or if you bought an Xbox Series, you know, S or X, and you, you know, you got this control over, uh, well, you probably wouldn't have got a blue, blue one, probably got a black one, but if you did, then 
this works via USB cable, plug it in directly and it works. And the wireless works as well because it's Bluetooth. So you just need a Bluetooth dongle or Bluetooth built in. If you've got a laptop, it should already be built in. If you've got a desktop, maybe, maybe not, depending on if you have a custom build. But if you do have a custom build, you can get a cheap dongle off Amazon or eBay for probably a few quid or a few dollars. It should be all good to go. So oh, this is the one I'll be using. I'll hopefully I've explained all the different ways of doing it. If you do struggle, just post in the Discord group. There's a link in the description and there's a Vita 3K channel, so the post in there. Okay, so you just wanna open up Bluetooth. So if you have just connected it via wire, then you can just skip this you know, process. So if I click add Bluetooth, and if I keep this sync button pressed, this will start flashing pretty fast. Click Bluetooth. Xbox wireless controller, click that, which I just did. And there we go, that's it. Easy way to confirm that it is connected, and that's for any of the controllers I mentioned, wired or wireless, dongle or no dongle, is to, if you type in, put it down here, game, set up USB game controllers. If you open that up, I'll close this down and it'll appear in here. Ignore whatever it's called. Go to properties. And if I start, you know, doing stuff, as long as it's triggering it, you're all good to go. If it isn't, something's gone wrong, try removing it and try adding it again. Okay, so uh, uh, let me just show you something else. Go to Bluetooth. If you're on an older Windows, you might have an interface more like devices and printers. And then from there, you can click add a device and it'll detect uh, you know, a device. So, so you can always go to the old school menu if you prefer, I know some do. If you have issues trying to sync it with this, with Xbox you probably won't, with other controllers if you do, try devices and printers, I've found that works. I've even found sometimes this newer wor version of Windows Bluetooth menu asks for a password, even though you don't need one, and then devices and printers doesn't, so try that. Okay, so next step, just to launch Vita 3K and map the controls. So <laughs> obviously most of this video has been on the explanation of just this, but I thought it was a pretty important thing to you know cover because depending on what controller you have, it's, it, it it's, might just be simple as plug and play, it might not be. But because it is Microsoft, any drivers are required, they do just install automatically for the most part. So you should be all good. If you have an issue, just let me know. So we go to controls, controllers. There we go, it's picked it up. And that's it. And, and I'll go to escape. And that's it. So we can't really do anything for these controls because you know it's already been you know configured. And that's it. So let me go to you know mayo. Okay, yeah, so circle turns it on and off. So square would be where X is, so that's sign in. But again, that's probably giving an error. So yeah, because obviously we can't sign in. Triangle be Y to go back, and we can move around with this. And we can press X. Let me turn the volume down a bit. There we go. Let's earn another trophy. I think you get one at 50. Oh yeah, so that's it. <laughs> Not much more to it than that. I'll close the game out. And that is pretty cool that it automatically you know, maps your controller. It's a bit annoying in a way because it means you can't actually you know, remap it, but it, it's a simple emulator that just works. And so that's it. So that's how you connect up an Xbox controller. I'll have another video you know, sh do showing how to do a PS4 controller. Those are the controllers I'm gonna concentrate on, Xbox and PS4 controllers for my emulators and maybe some other ones. If, because I have done, you know, emulators with loads of the different controllers and I've just found that, frankly, those videos haven't been as successful. So I'd rather pump out more videos, let's say, that people actually wanna watch. But if there are other controllers that you wanna see connected to Vita 3K on Windows, or another platform, let me know. If I get enough demand, I'll do it. So I'm happy with that. 
So that's it. All the links will be in the description. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next emulator video.